So today, we are having Sankirtan, Congregational Glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is ultimately known as Govinda. Everybody can say? Govinda. That is the original name of God. And he has hundreds and thousands of names, such as Krishna, everybody say? Krishna. And Rama. Rama. Thousands and thousands of names. And in each of one of those names are all the specific potencies of the Lord. According to the Upanishads, Parasya Shakti Vividhaiva Suryate. God has unlimited potencies and each of his names has transcendental spiritual potencies. So we're going to do two classes today. In this first class, which was requested by Shaili, we will hear from Kamlesha's favorite book, the Bhagavad Gita. And um, the subject matter is how is Bhagavad Gita practical in our lives? And for that answer, I will read an excerpt from the introduction to Bhagavad Gita as it is, because that introduction is a wonderful summation of what is Bhagavad Gita. So before I begin, I must chant my favorite mantras. Trinadapi sunichena tarar iva sahishnuna amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahari. Before speaking, I must have the proper mentality. I must be meek and humble. I must be more tolerant than a tree. I must give respect to everyone. Why? Krishna is in your heart. Therefore, I must respect you, regardless of who you are. Krishna is there. Then, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Iva Kevalam, Kalau Nastyeva, Nastyeva, Nastyeva Gatiranyata. The scriptures inform us that in this age, the age of Kali, the Iron Age, the age of quarrel and hypocrisy, and we see that every day in the news. That's all you see, whether it be politics and now these last two weeks, sports, so much uh, fighting and hypocrisy. The big worshipable NFL is now under scrutiny by, I was telling my wife, in Kali Yuga, there's a new religion, sports. People are more interested in sports than they are God. So now they have founded another religion, another idol, especially in America, the NFL. And they even have their deity. <laughs> But it's the age of Kali, so there's bound to be quarrel and hypocrisy. So this mantra says that in this age, if you want salvation, if you want deliverance, if you want peace, if you want love, the way to get it, the only way to get it, nastieva, 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 there's no other way but to hear and chant and talk about the holy name of God. And as I said at the beginning, the original name of God is? Govinda. Govinda. Ah. But he's also known as Krishna. Yes, it's the same. But I'm quoting from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. Okay, so let's hear Bhagavad Gita. Are you ready? Very good. Yes, you are always ready. 
24 hours. So, in Prabhupada's introduction, he quotes this famous verse. This is a verse, just like Kamlesh, you have your favorite verse. So this is the favorite verse of Kundan, Krishna Kumar. This is the verse that has saved him. This is in the eighth chapter where Arjuna has asked Krishna several questions. And the final question that Arjuna asked in the beginning of chapter 8 was, how can I, what should I do at the time of death? So Krishna says, yes, at the time of death you should just remember me. Because whatever you are thinking of at that moment of death, that will determine your next chapter. I was speaking yesterday in a Catholic high school and I was explaining to the students something they didn't know anything about, which you all know, reincarnation, transmigration of the soul. You all know that from birth because you're Hindu, but you're learning, you're now Hindu. Welcome, you and me. Correct? Good. From one angle of vision. So, I was explaining to these Catholic school seniors that reincarnation, life is like a book. And you've always existed, you exist now, and the book of life continues after this life. So, your next life is your next chapter. So, if you want to... Um, in the next chapter of your life, because life is eternal, then Krishna says, whatever you're thinking of at the moment of death determines how the next chapter is going to turn out. You create your own destiny. You are the architect of your own destiny, all based on your choices. I was explaining to them. It's all based on your choices. So after Krishna tells Arjuna, at the time of death, simply remember me, comes this very important practical. Practical. Dasmat sarveshu kaleshu mamanusmara yudyacha mayarpita mano buddhir mame vaishya sangshaya. Please repeat. Krishna says, Therefore Arjuna, Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me, you should always think of me in, the form of Krishna. in the form of Krishna. There is Krishna on the altar. Your deity's name is Radha Shamasundar. Yes, another name for Krishna. Beautiful, blackish Shamasundara. So Krishna is saying you should think of him in the form of and this ties into what Krishna says in chapter 12 when Arjuna asks the question, should I meditate on you impersonally or should I think of you personal? And Krishna immediately says, think of my personal form. So it's the same thing. Krishna is consistent. There's no hodgepodge, no flip-flop like politicians. Politicians say one thing on Monday, and on Tuesday, they say the opposite. Same thing happening now in the football. Their big commissioner said one thing, then he backtracked and said, can't believe these people. Hypocrites. Not Krishna. Krishna says consistently, please repeat, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna. You should always think of me in the form of Krishna. And at the same time. And at the same time. Ah. Here comes the hard part. Continue your prescribed duty. For Arjuna, it was fighting. Now we, we're not supposed to be fighting, but we have our prescribed duties. Either as a man, in, the, in our Vedic Hindu scriptures, there are so many duties for the man. There's duties for the woman. Not that the woman does no, she also has. The children have duties. Children, you want to know what your duty is? Obey your parents. Real simple. Simple duty for the children. Obey your parents. 
Krishna even says that in the 18th chapter. If you want Krishna's blessings, you have to obey your parents. Everybody has duties, whether you are a Brahmana, a Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shuddha, doesn't matter. You have a prescribed duty. But at the same time, you're supposed to think of Krishna. Now, Prabhupada is going to explain that. Please continue. Uh, repeat. With your activities dedicated to me. So that's another big practical point. That whatever we're doing in life should be an act of dedication to Krishna. We should dedicate these. Like I've told people for so many years, because people will say to me, Prabhuji, I can't do chanting, I can't do this, I can't do this. How can I start this bhakti? And I tell them very simple. When you start your car in the morning and you're ready to go to work, just say, Krishna, I offer this day to you. This is practical application of Bhagavad Gita. Just offer it. Begin. There's always a beginning point. Please repeat. And your mind and intelligence fixed on me. You will attain me without a doubt. So just see how great Krishna is. Simple program. And if you do this, you will achieve, you will attain the association of Krishna. Just as we're in each other's association right now. I'm looking at you, you're looking at me. I'm not a TV screen, I'm a live person. So someday, you will be like this with Krishna. If you follow this formula, you will one day be just like this. Isn't that fantastic? First, you have to know who is Krishna and why. But if you understand who is Krishna, then this verse is like, oh, this is the verse to live by. Let's see what my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, he helps us to understand this. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So Prabhupada writes, Krishna does not advise Arjuna simply to remember him and give up his occupation, something that many people I've heard over the years think that's what you have to do. That you leave everything and no. That's not what Krishna said, did he? Krishna did not say to Arjuna, go take sannyas. No, he told him, fight and think of me. So Prabhupada continues, no, the Lord never suggests anything impractical. In this material world, in order to maintain the body, one has to work. Human society is divided according to work into four divisions of social order. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudhana. Last today, I mentioned this to that Catholic high school because their teacher is telling them about the caste system. So when I saw what the teacher is teaching them, I said, ooh, I got to straighten that out. So I was telling them, the students, that the caste system that's going on presently and for so many years is not the caste system that is explained by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. The actual true caste system is not based on birth. It's based on training. It's based on qualification. And I told the students something very practical. I asked the students, anybody here have a doctor as their parent? So two or three of the kids said, yes, my father is, my mother's a doctor. So I asked them, so if they're a doctor, does that mean you're a doctor? And intelligently they said, no. I said the same way. You may be born in a certain so-called caste, but you may not have the qualifications. And I explained my case. My father, when he was alive, he worked on cars and trucks. But I don't know anything about cars and trucks. So because he was a mechanic, I'm automatically a mechanic? No. 
So the same way, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaisa, Suja, Krishna says, it's based on the qualities and the training that you actually have, what you demonstrate. How do you actually act? That is the determining factor of whether you are a Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaisha, Shudra. Not that, hey, I have this name, I have this birth, therefore I am. No. You have to show it. You have to talk it. You have to walk it. You have to be. For, say somebody is the son or daughter of a very, very excellent cook. Right? But they may not know how to cook. Then you're not going to eat that food. No, somebody has to actually know how to cook. See? So the same way, don't say, I'm a Brahmin, I'm a Kshatriya, Vaishya, unless you know what are the qualifications. And Bhagavad Gita tells you what those are. Prabhupada continues, The Brahmin class or intelligent class is working in one way, the Kshatriya or administrative class is working in another way. And the mercantile class and the laborers are all tending to their specific duties. In human society, whether one is a laborer, merchant, administrator, or farmer, or even if one belongs to the highest class and is a literary man, like a scientist or a theologian, one has to work in order to maintain one's existence. Yes, and we're all householders. So definitely this is applicable. We have to work. That's what we're supposed to do. The Lord therefore tells Arjuna that he need not give up his occupation. But while he's engaged in his occupation, he should remember Krishna. If he doesn't practice remembering Krishna while he is struggling for existence, then it will not be possible for him to remember Krishna at the time of death. And we get that question because people will hear that if you simply remember Krishna at the time of death, you get salvation. So somebody is thinking, hmm, let me do all kinds of nonsense and at the time of death I'll remember Krishna. Not so fast. Doesn't work that way. That's why Prabhupada is saying you have to practice remembering Krishna. That is the whole point of sadhana. Practicing. Just like if you're an athlete or a musician, you have to practice if you want to perform nicely. These athletes, if they want to do nicely, they have to practice every day. So same way, we have to practice remembering Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Now Prabhupada continues, Lord Chaitanya also advises this. He says, Kirtaniya Sada Hari. One should practice chanting the names of the Lord always. The names of the Lord and the Lord himself are non-different. So Lord Krishna's instructions to Arjuna to remember me and Lord Chaitanya's injunction to always chant the names of Lord Krishna are exactly the same instruction. There is no difference because Krishna and Krishna's name are non-different. In the absolute status, there is no difference between reference and referent. Therefore, we have to practice remembering the Lord always, 24 hours a day, by chanting his names and molding our life's activities in such a way that we can remember him always. Amit was telling me when I got here and setting everything up, he told me, that ever since he got his Radha Krishna deities, everything has changed. Am I right? You did say that. Yes. So, he is experiencing what Prabhupada just wrote here. Molding life's activities in such a way that we can remember Krishna always. And that was one of the things he mentioned. That because of this now, so much of their day is 
focused on Krishna. So very good. May you continue. Now Prabhupada goes to another level. How is this possible? The Acharyas give the following example. If a married woman is attached to another man, or if a man has an attachment for a woman other than his wife, then that attachment is to be considered very strong. One with such an attachment is always thinking of the loved one. The wife who is thinking of her lover is always thinking of meeting him, even while she is carrying out her household chores. In fact, she carries out her household work even more carefully so husband will not suspect, suspect her attachment. This is a practical example. And unfortunately in America this goes on all the time. But the point Prabhupada is making here is that because this person has this strong attachment for another, they do their activities perfectly, but what's in their heart, what's in their mind, when can I be with that person? Similarly, we should always remember the supreme lover. Who is the supreme lover? Krishna. And at the same time, perform our material duties very nicely. So children, you are to execute your school duties very nicely, and at the same time, think of Krishna, okay? Housewives, do your duties, think of Krishna. Men, make money, work hard, take care of your family, and think of Krishna. So you got to be able to do two things at once. So now Prabhupada says, a strong sense of love is required. If we have a strong sense of love for the Supreme Lord, then we can discharge our duty and at the same time remember him. So that's the next question. How to develop a strong sense of love for Krishna? The secret is it begins by hearing. When you hear someone, and you hear their greatness, now there's a, something to become attached to. If you don't hear about Krishna, then Krishna, who, who's Krishna? But if you hear about Krishna, then your attachment will begin to grow. For instance, Rukmani, Krishna's first wife. She never saw Krishna, but when Narada Muni and other sages would come to the palace, they would describe Krishna to her and all the things that Krishna had done. And by hearing them, she became attached to Krishna, even without seeing him, just by hearing his greatness. And she was so attached that she said, I am not going to marry anyone except Krishna. And even though she was betrothed to Shishupal ugh, by the tricks of her brother, still she remained fixed. I will only marry Krishna. And she wrote that letter which she gave to a Brahmin. And Krishna read that letter and he told the Brahmin, yes, as Rukmini is always thinking of me, I am also thinking of her. Because what happened was Krishna was fighting Jarasandha for the 18th time. And on the 18th time he said, eh, I got better things to do. I know Rukmini is trying to get in touch with me. So he left the battle. Ranchorji, everybody say. Ranchorji. He left the battle. Why? Because he wanted Rukmini. He already defeated Jarasandha 17 times. He got bored. Rukmini is more important. So Rukmini wrote that letter and just at the last moment when she was about to be married to Shishupal, Krishna came on the chariot, stole her away, and they lived happily ever after. 
such an exciting romance. Rukmini and Krishna. Yes, there is transcendental romance. You don't need to watch any of these movies or sitcom. All kinds of romance is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Arjuna, for instance, was always thinking of Krishna. He was the constant companion of Krishna. And at the same time, he was a warrior. Krishna did not advise him to give up fighting and go to the forest to meditate. When Lord Krishna delineates the yoga system to Arjuna, Arjuna says that the practice of yoga is not possible for him. So one who thinks of the Supreme Lord always is the greatest yogi, the supermost jnani, and the greatest devotee at the same time. The Lord further tells Arjuna that as a kshatriya, he cannot give up fighting. But if Arjuna fights remembering Krishna, then he will be able to remember Krishna at the time of death. But one must be completely surrendered in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. And we have Kamlesh Patel, who I've given the name Bhagavad Gita 1866. So he will explain to us what is that verse. Yes, because he uses the phrase, Ma may come, exclusively me. Yes. So that is what Prabhupada completely surrendered. We work not with our body, actually, but with our mind and intelligence. So if the intelligence and mind are always engaged in the thought of the Supreme Lord, then naturally the senses are also engaged in his service. Superficially, at least, the activities of the senses remain the same, but the consciousness is changed. The Bhagavad Gita teaches one how to absorb the mind and intelligence in the thought of the Lord. Such absorption will enable one to transfer him or herself to the kingdom of God. If the mind is engaged in Krishna's service, then the senses are automatically engaged in his service. This is the art and this is the secret of Bhagavad Gita. So listen, this is the secret of Bhagavad Gita. Everyone repeat, total absorption, total absorption. in the thought of Sri Krishna. So now you have the secret of the Bhagavad Gita. And finishing up, after reading this, from Prabhupada, I was remembering another verse which encapsulates everything. Please repeat. Yat karoshi, yadashnasi, yajjuhoshi, dadasi yat, yat tapasyasi, kaunteya, tat karushva, madarpanam, so this is another verse which is completely summarizes Bhagavad Gita, what we've been talking about. Please repeat. Krishna says to Arjuna, says to Arjuna whatever, you do, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you, eat, whatever you, offer, whatever you offer, or give away, or give away whatever austerities you perform, O son, o son of Kunti, do that as an offering to me. So this is the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Whatever you're doing, do it for Krishna. Everybody chant the Maha Mantra. And now, I would like Meenakshi Rajarani.